sisters and brothers on a full moon day or the month of july sl like the one that dawn today 2572 years ago to be precise siddhartha gautama the buddha delivered his first sermon to the five ascetics and set in motion the dharma chakra or the wheel of truth and therefore the buddhists of sri lanka commemorate the first sermon of the buddha and hold the dharma chakra festival therefore jawaharlal nehru the late prime minister of india wrote in his discovery of india i quote at sarnath near benares i could almost see the buddha preaching his first sermon and some of his recorded words would come like a distant echo to me through 2500 years these are words of jawaharlal nehru and then that renowned physicist and nobel prize winner sir chandrasekhar venkataraman when it was his turn to speak on december 11th 1930 at the royal dinner at the king's palace stockholm sweden left aside science and to the surprise of the renowned guests delivered a most powerful address on the buddha and india's past glories Savenkataraman said in the vicinity of Benares there exists a path which is for me the most sacred place in India this path was one day traveled over by prince siddharth after he had gotten rid of all his worldly possession in order to go through the world and proclaim the enunciation of love these are words of sir venkataraman now sisters and brothers before i comment on the contents of the first sermon let me give you a preface or the background as the buddhists and most of the people know that the bodhisattva siddhartha gautama attained full enlightenment on a vesak day at the bodhi tree at gaya then he spent one week at this bodhi tree enjoying the bliss of a deliverance or vimukti sukha and pondering over the deepest aspect of his teaching namely paticca samuppada or dependent arising or the causal genesis and then the buddha spent six more weeks in the vicinity of the bodhi tree at six different places now at the end of the seven weeks the buddha made up his mind to proclaim the dharma then he thought of his erstwhile five ascetics who were practicing self modification with him with siddhartha gautama they were good men virtuous people but they did not know the path to deliverance so the buddha thought of approaching them siddhartha gautama the buddha he was very young 35 years of old walked from buddha gaya to baranasi a distance of about 150 miles by gradual process he came to isipatanos modern sarnath on the way he met different types of people and spoke to them gladdened them enlightened them when he approached these five ascetics they saw the buddha at a distance and smiled and said there comes siddhartha gautama who left us and went to live a life of luxury a life of abundance let us not welcome him only give him a seat he comes from a royal family 
a noble family, that's all. But the Buddha, reading their thoughts, radiated very powerful Maitri or Metta or loving kindness, like a flashlight. And that touched them and influenced them so much. The five ascetics broke their promise, could not keep their promise. One went to welcome the Buddha. One arranged the water. One arranged the seat. Now the Buddha patiently sat down and spoke to them. Friends, listen to me. I have attained enlightenment. Then the five ascetics smiled and said, you have attained enlightenment. You who are with us practicing self-torture for six long years and could not attain enlightenment. You went to live a life of luxury and now you say you have attained enlightenment. Are we to believe you? The Buddha repeated his request. I had not, I have not given up effort. I did not live a life of abundance. Listen to me, friends. I have attained enlightenment. I will give you the Dharma. Three times the Buddha re made this request. Three times the ascetics refused. Then the Buddha very patiently said, O oh friends, confess, did ever I speak to you in this wise before when I was with you? Touched by this appeal, the five ascetics submitted and acknowledged and said, Nay indeed, Lord, you never said a thing like that, that you had attained enlightenment when you were with you. They were convinced. Thus, the Buddha, with patience and kindness, with wisdom and skill, drew them to his sublime way of the deliverance. And then he spoke to them and gave them the first sermon. Friends, those who live a recluse life should avoid two extremes. Sensual indulgence is one extreme. Self-mortification is another extreme. Avoiding these two extremes, I have discovered the Noble Eightfold Path consisting of right understanding, right thoughts, right speech, right action, right mode of living or right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness and right concentration which lead to vision, knowledge, wisdom, enlightenment, deliverance and nirvana. Now, sisters and brothers, when you take these factors of the enlightenment, we will find that this is Buddhism in practice. We have to practice the Noble Eightfold Path. In this first sermon, Buddha spoke about the four truths pertaining to human beings, all beings in a way. There is dukkha or suffering. If you don't like the word suffering, let us call it conflicts or problems. And then there is a cause or causes for this unsatisfactoriness, this dukkha, these conflicts and these problems. They are more subjective rather than objective. And then there is a cessation of this unsatisfactoriness, these conflicts, and the path or way leading to the cessation of these conflicts. Now this is the Four Noble Truths, Dukkha or unsatisfactoriness, suffering, agony, conflicts, problems, and their causes, their cessation, and the way leading to the cessation of these conflicts and problems. When there is a problem, sisters and brothers, we are not happy and that is why we want to solve the problem. And you know that the solution is in the problem itself. 
Dukkha is with us, all these conflicts. And you know the, the solution to these com conflicts or problems are also with us. And the Buddha gave the prescription. The prescription is the Noble Eightfold Path, eight factors or eight limbs, which can be reduced to three groups, Sila, Samadhi and Panya. Now Sila group, right speech, right action, right livelihood, form the Sila or the morality group. We go a step further and find out the Samadhi group, right effort, right mindfulness and right concentration. This is the meditation or concentration group. Here right effort means mental effort to discipline our mind. And then comes the wisdom group or Panya, right understanding and right thoughts. You see these eight factors, irrespective of caste, color, creed, sex or any other division, we can follow this path. Never mind what your religion is. It doesn't matter what language you speak, what clothes you wear, what food you eat, what country you call your home. For the Buddha, it is the, it is the for the Buddha, it is just love. It is the, it is draped in love. It is the qualities of the heart. So now, can anyone say that this Noble Eightfold Path consisting of these eight factors delivered more than 2,500 years ago is jejune and puerile and outdated? I think only the muddle-headed, I mean the persons who are confused in mind will say this is outdated. You know, sisters and brothers, Today we need right understanding more than during the time of the Buddha. There is so much of misunderstanding, wrong understanding. And right understanding leads to right thoughts. If our thoughts are right, speech is right, action is right. So you see we need right understanding, right thoughts, right speech and so on and so forth. Now, these eight factors reduced to Sila Samadhi Panya. Now this idea is carried in that oft quoted but ever fresh Pali stanza Sabba Papasa Akaranang Kusalasa Upasampada Sachitta Pariyo Dapanang Etang Buddhana Sasanang to put aside each ill of old to leave no noble deed undone to cleanse the mind in these behold the teachings of the enlightened one. Well, sisters and brothers, I must wind up this talk. I thank you very patiently for your uh, hearing. May your upward path be smooth, sure and steady.